In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I crochet these colorful socks. Thank you for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Now let's get started. There will be more information in the description box below. This is a category one yarn and it is 100% wool. To get my gauge right on this pattern, I am using a D 3.125 millimeter crochet hook. I am also using a yarn needle, pair of scissors, and a few stitch markers. Here is the gauge pattern. Please pause the video and check your gauge. Starting with the cuff, create a slip knot. and chain 31. Once we get to 31, I'll meet back up with you. Here I have chained 31. Make sure not to count this loop on your hook. We're then going to single crochet into the second chain from hook. So one, two, insert your hook, grab your yarn and pull up a loop. We have two loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through both loops for the single crochet. We're then going to single crochet into each chain all the way back. At the end of this row, we will have 30 single crochet. At the end of row one, chain one and turn. Now we're just going to place one single crochet into each stitch all the way back for row two. And again, we will have 30 single crochet. To begin row three, chain one and turn. Now this row we're going to be working in the back loops only. So we're going to be single crocheting into this back loop here. You're going to insert your hook from the top of the stitch like this to grab the back loop. This causes the front loop to push forward and create a beautiful texture. So we're just going to do the same thing, be single crocheting into each stitch but only grabbing that back loop all the way down our work. At the end, you want to chain one and turn to begin row four. At the end of row three, chain one and turn. Row four, we're just going to be single crocheting into each stitch and we're going to be grabbing both loops for this row. So just one single crochet into each stitch for row five through 50, we are just going to be repeating row three and row four. So row three again is the back loops only and row four is just your regular single crochet all the way back. I will see you again for row 51. After row five through 50, this is what my work looks like. Now we can do row 51. Row 51 is just going to be a repeat of row three so we're just going to place one single crochet into each of our back loops all the way across. Once this is finished, I will meet back up again. Now we can begin the ankle of our sock. You are going to need a stitch marker because these are going to be worked in rounds. Now this first round, we're going to work across the top of the cuff right here. So of course we were working over here before and now you're just going to turn it and we're going to be working into these row ends. So now chain one and working across these row ends, we're going to be single crocheting all along here until we have 48 single crochet. Once that is finished, I will meet back up for the next step. So here I have done the ankle round one and I've worked into my row ends. My work is curling like this. I just wanted to show that. So there I have 48 single crochet running all along here. Now from here, I'm just going to take my work and fold it like this. So there's the first single crochet of this round that we just did. And I'm going to single crochet into it. Now I'm going to place my stitch marker into that first stitch. These next few rounds are going to be worked in the round. So you're not going to slip stitch. You're just going to move your stitch marker, single crochet into the same stitch and then replace your stitch marker. So this is round two and we're going to go until round seven. 
Once round seven is complete, I'll meet back up with you. After rounds two through seven, this is how my work looks. Row eight, we're going to single crochet into the next 12 stitches. So I'm just going to remove my stitch marker and start single crocheting. There's one, two, replacing my stitch marker. And once I get to 12 single crochet, I can meet back up with you. Now after doing those 12 single crochet, we're just going to stop and turn our work. You're going to leave the remaining stitches unworked. Now we can begin the heel flap of the sock. So for row one, we're going to chain one, we've already turned, and single crochet into the next 24 stitches. So we're going to go right across where our stitch marker is here and single crochet to 24, just one single crochet into each stitch. And once we get there, I will meet back up with you again and I can show you how my work is looking. So here I have single crocheted 24 stitches. And now for row two, they say to turn and chain one. Then single crochet into the next 24 stitches. So the same 24 stitches and then turn for row three. I will meet back up again for row three. Here I have done row two. And now it says for rows three through 15, we're going to repeat row two. So of course we're just going to turn or chain one and turn and single crochet into the 24 stitches until we reach row 15. At the end of row 15, this is how my work looks. And now we can turn. This is our work on the right side. So right side is facing and we can begin turning the heel. Now row one of heel turning, you want to chain one and then single crochet into the next 15 stitches. Once that is done, I will meet again for the next step. After you have completed those 15 stitches, you want to turn to begin row two. Row two, chain one, and single crochet into the next six stitches. You're going to leave the remaining nine stitches unworked. Turn to begin row three. Row three, chain one, and single crochet into the next five stitches. Now we're going to do a decrease. In order to do that, you're going to insert your hook into this very last stitch, the sixth stitch. Grab your yarn and pull up a loop. Then you're going to jump down to this row 15 down here. Insert your hook, grab your yarn and pull up a loop. And there's three loops on the hook now. Yarn over and pull through all three loops to complete the stitch or the decrease. After you have done that decrease, you're just going to single crochet once more on that row 15 and leave these seven stitches unworked. Turn to begin row four. For row four, chain one and single crochet into these next six stitches. Then we're going to decrease over this last stitch and this stitch down here. Place one more single crochet and 
leave these last seven stitches unworked. Turn to begin row five. Row five, chain one, and single crochet the next seven stitches. Then decrease the next two stitches. So this last stitch, and we're going to jump down and get this other stitch. Single crochet once more. And leave these last five stitches unworked. Turn to begin row six. Row six, chain one, and single crochet into the next eight stitches. You can pause the video and we will meet back up again. Here we are at the end of row six and we want to do a decrease. So one up here and one down here. Those are the two stitches we're grabbing for the decrease. Do one more single crochet and leave these five remaining stitches unworked. Turn to begin the next row. Row seven, chain one and single crochet into the next nine stitches. Go ahead and pause the video, and once you've done your nine single crochet, I will meet back up again. Then again, we're going to do a decrease. Single crochet one more, and leave the remaining three stitches unworked. Turn to begin row eight. Chain one for row eight and single crochet into the next 10 stitches. Pause the video and once you have your 10 stitches complete, we can continue on with row eight. After those 10 stitches are worked, you can do another decrease. Single crochet once more, and leave the remaining three stitches unworked. Turn to begin row nine. So before we start row nine, I just wanted to show you how well this is cupping already. I don't know if it's the camera showing depth, but there is our heel making a beautiful turn. For row nine, chain one and single crochet into your next 11 stitches. Pause the video and I will meet you back again to complete row nine. So after those 11 stitches, you want to do another decrease and then another single crochet. Leave that last stitch unworked. Turn to begin row 10. Row 10, chain one and single crochet into your next 12 stitches. Pause the video and after those 12 stitches are complete, we can finish row 10. So here we're going to do another decrease. And one more single crochet. Leave that last stitch unworked and turn. After row 10, you want to turn and chain one to begin row 11. Row 11, we are going to single crochet into the next 13 stitches. Pause the video and once you've got your 13 stitches, we can continue with row 11. To complete row 11, you're going to single crochet decrease and then turn to begin row 12. Row 12, chain one and single crochet over the next 13 stitches. Once you get to the end here, you want to single crochet decrease just like we did for row 11, and then fasten off. Here I am just doing that last decrease for row 12. And then you just want to grab your scissors, snip your yarn, pull the tail through to finish it off. And then we can begin the gusset and the foot of the sock. Now to begin the gusset and the foot of the sock, you want to start with the heel 
facing you, the right side. You're then going to count eight single crochet of the row 12, two, four, six, eight, and join your yarn in that stitch. Now you can join your yarn however you feel most comfortable. I put a little knot in and did it like so. You're then going to single crochet into these stitches right here. So just six single crochet, one into each stitch. Now working along the side of the heel flap, we are going to place 12 stitches right along here. So go ahead and place 12 stitches evenly spaced and we can meet back up again for when we do the decrease. We're going to do a decrease down here. And there's no right or wrong to your 12 stitches, but just try to make them evenly spaced and that they look nice. So here I have done those 12 stitches. I did use my stitch marker to mark my first one just so that I could keep readjusting and get it the way I wanted it to. So now we're going to do a single crochet decrease. Now for this decrease, I did zoom up a little bit so we can see how this looks. These stitches are so tiny with this yarn. So we're going to be doing a decrease. And as you see, there's this stitch right here and that's been worked by this stitch here. And we're going to pick up one stitch from this part right here, the side of the heel, and then one from right here. Now I'm going to skip over that stitch and work into this stitch here because that stitch has already been worked. So I'm going to insert my hook right here, the side, as my first stitch. And then my second stitch I'm going to pick up is right here. And just do my decrease. We're then going to single crochet the next 22 stitches. So go ahead and pause the video, and once you have your 22 stitches complete, we can continue on with this first round. Here I have worked those 22 stitches, and now we're all ready for another decrease. So grabbing one stitch, of course, from this section right here, which will eventually be the top of the foot, and grabbing one stitch, and one stitch from the side of the heel. doing our decrease, and then we are going to work 12 stitches evenly along here to match this side of the work. Once you have your 12 stitches evenly spaced, you're going to just single crochet into the last seven stitches. Slip stitch to your first stitch of the round, and that completes round one of the gusset and foot. Now before we begin row two, go ahead and grab three stitch markers. One for the beginning of the round, and then two for each of the decreases on each side of the heel, or the gusset. So one right here, and one right here. So into that decrease stitch, I'm just going to place my stitch marker right there, and then another one on this side. Then of course the last one will go into the first stitch of the round. At the end of row one for the gusset and foot, you should have 62 single crochet. To begin round two, single crochet into each one of these stitches until the stitch right before this blue marker here. So we're going to go up until right there. Here I am ready to do the first decrease of round two, and there is our decrease of the previous round, of course, in the stitch marker. And there is a stitch right before that that we're going to use. So we're going to use this stitch right before the stitch marker and the stitch that the stitch marker was in. Complete the decrease and then place your stitch marker back into that decrease stitch. Single crochet all of these stitches along here. And then once we get back over here, we're going to single crochet decrease the stitch that is marked by the stitch marker and then one right here on the side of the heel. Here I am doing the second decrease of round two, removing my stitch marker. 
we're going to decrease the stitch that the stitch marker was in and the next stitch. Replace the stitch marker and then single crochet all along here until you reach your first stitch of the round. Slip stitch and then we can begin round three. For rounds three through eight, we're going to repeat round two. Round eight should have 54 single crochet. Remember to remove your markers and move them up as you go. After working gusset and foot rows three through eight, this is how my work looks. From here, we can take out these side blue stitch markers. And this one just fell out, but I'm gonna put it back in. And it says row nine, you're going to single crochet into each stitch all the way around and continue until your work measures two and a half inches less than the desired length. So we're just going to be single crocheting around and around until my sock measures about five and a half inches. Here my sock measures about five and a half inches. Now we can begin the shaping of the toe. To begin the toe of the sock, you want to grab two stitch markers. After you grab your stitch markers, just take your sock and with the heel facing you, fold it flat like that. And then place your stitch markers one in each side. Adjust them until you have 23 stitches on each side. You're going to have 23 stitches between your stitch markers. Your stitch markers will each be holding a stitch. So you'll have 23, 23, and a total of 48 stitches. Now to begin round one of the toe shaping, I'm already partway through row one, as you can see. This is my beginning row marker here. And I have come just before two stitches before my stitch marker. So one, two. I'm going to decrease these two stitches, single crochet, then decrease the next two stitches. And you're going to do that for row one on each side of these side stitch markers. So of course, single crochet, decrease these two stitches. Then move your stitch marker, single crochet. Replace your stitch marker. And then single crochet, decrease these two stitches on the other side. Single crochet one into each stitch until you get two stitches before this stitch marker. Then decrease, single crochet, replace your stitch marker, decrease, and then go until your row end, which is this marker here. Row two, you're simply going to single crochet into each stitch all the way around. Make sure to be replacing the stitch markers after you have crocheted into them. Repeat rows one and row two for rows three, four, five, and six. We are going to be doing round one, of course, has the decrease on each side of the side stitch markers on both sides, and round two is just single crochet all the way around. I'll meet back up when we get to the end of round six. Here I am at the end of round six. And you can see that the toe shaping is coming along quite nicely. The decreases, as you can see, are sloping in like this. Now for round seven, we're basically going to be repeating round one. Round seven through 12 is all the same. So that would be repeating round one. So like I said, decreasing on each side of these side stitch markers. And then once we get to the end of round 12, I will meet back up and we can see how the work looks. Here's my work at the end of row 12. And for this last little space here, we're just going to snip our yarn.
Then you're just going to take your yarn needle and just do a simple stitch weaving in and out around the top of the sock. Pull it taut and then weave in all your other ends. After that, grab a little bit more yarn and then do again another simple stitch just to close up the side opening of the sock. Weave in the rest of your ends and then your sock is all finished. After weaving in all your ends, go ahead and make a second sock. I hope you enjoy making these fun and colorful crochet socks. Thank you for watching, commenting, liking this tutorial, sharing the YouTube link with your friends, and subscribing if you haven't. Have a lovely crochet day, and I hope to see you again in my next tutorial. Bye!